Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Alan, for the introduction. Um, my name is John Byrne from the Civil and um, Environmental Department of VSB International. I also have a diploma in Building Information Modelling and Management, which I got from the School of Multidisciplinary Technology in DIT in Bolton Street. The, the benefits, I hope today, are the benefits digital technology has brought to VSB International. I will guide you through our digital design and modelling experience of electrical infrastructures from the start, showing you examples of how we developed along the way. First off, this is our Arda Crusher 110 GIS um, substation in County Clare. It was built on the site of the first hydroelectric power station built in Ireland. And it's, it's very apt as our first 3D digital model. This was done in tandem with, some, with 2D CAD, as we were just experimenting at the time. So we, used, we did both in tandem to see how the experiment would work. We, used the, we did actually use the model to check the fabricated the steel fabrication drones, which we ghosted over this model here to check all the fabrication at the time. From early days, we could see the benefits of, of BIM. Moving on, this is one of our first jobs that we brought to site. This is a standalone BIM model, but it's not, it's not a central model in other words. We still collaborate with this model. Um, you put our HV uh, designers. We got the 3D cable design, which we did in MicroStation, in a 3D application, and actually Bentley MicroStation. Uh, the switch gear, which we got from our vendor ABB, is taken in from a SAT file. And what we did with this was it enabled us to clash detect and space proof the whole design. As you can see, we put we sat the switch gear on the floor and we connected the cables to the switch gear. We could see all the recesses required in the floor, all the holes, all the spaces. So it gave us great coordination from early on. It also gave us um, good quantities we could pass on to our quantity surveyors. Um, so we sorted out the building, as I say, virtually before we did logic, construction logically. But we also noted um, we were doing a few substations before this, and our RFIs, we had a request for information from the site, was at, at the start about 140. By the time we got to build Money Point, we had our request for information down to 10 requests for information on that one building, and it's quite a substantial building. We also point out, we scanned the building when we finished, we scanned the basement when we finished with, with a laser scanner, and from our model, it was about three millimeters out overall. This is uh, another part of Money Point. Um, I'm sorry. This is also Money Point as well. We used here, we got the borehole logs of the Money Point site. And from that, we created topo surfaces in, in Revit. And what we did from that was we could work out all the pile penetrations into the rock. And from that, it gave us all the bulk quantities of the piling. This was very, very uh, useful to us, as we, it, it gave us um, a chance to validate all the contractor's claims on site, and we could prove them uh, very quickly what they were asking. This here is just an overhead line mast in Kilpadog, County Kerry. This is just some structural steel we did with Revit. In the green, you can see the existing overhead um, steelwork that was there. And all the, in grey was all the rest of the steelwork that was required for the, over, for the cabling. Now, there was a very small contractor involved in this, a fabricator, but what we did, we could still show him with the model exactly what we required. And then when, we, when he sent us into fabrication drawings, which were in 2D at the time, but it didn't matter, we could still match them up to the elevations and plans of the 3D model, which gave us an obviously advantage. This here is another, another use that we had for Revit was, we had a coordinated view, we had a problem in Nottingley on one of our sites in the UK, and we wanted to run a duct, which is a grey duct on the right-hand side there, through the middle of, of a, a myriad of pipeworks and, and services. So to prove, rather than being on site, we could prove them. We're using viewers and phone conversations, we could prove to the people on site that you could actually tread the ducting through, which made it very invaluable using a 3D model. Now this here is very interesting. This is the first, one of, one of the first jobs that we used a central model on, and we collaborated our architects, our structural engineers, civil engineers, all on the same model. We did this using work sets and shared work sets for any areas like the walls that we needed to be used between the architects and the engineers. We also, on the same model, we actually produced the fire cert plans, 
um, we took the models and we um, used robot to do all the um, design of the steelwork and the walls. So it's the first model that we actually, well, one of the first that we did that we actually used as a central model. This here is the, the other side. This is Ballyragan, which is in Kilkenny. This here is, is the other end of that project. You can see on this the 110, some bays for transformers and a 38 kV station. Now the beauty of this, what we did here was, it's a fully coordinated geolocated site. What we did was we geolocate the actual site plan yeah, from, um, use the mapping. So we geolocate one of the um, Revit files and then we push all the coordinates back into all the other files, which is the 110, the bays and the 38. So everything's geolocated automatically after that. This is one of the design packages we use as well as Tech is Fast Track, which is actually owned by Tekla now. We actually built it the Revit model, we push it into Fast Track, redesign the model, and you can see in red all the changes that were being made. This, this information had pushed back into the Revit model, and all the updates were made automatically, which makes it very easy. These here are just some other examples we used our Revit for. We used it's Carrington, Carrington Pass line, uh, gas pipeline to show, this is a horizontal direction drilling, and we wanted to show the contractor the stratum for the, um, first off, we want to show them the stratum for the, the steel sheet piling, and then for the direction of the drill that needed to go into the stratum and where they needed to enter. This is a very good model to show them and to explain for them exactly what we needed to do. Then we went on to the Old Lenny Bridge. These were existing buttresses that we were on to one of the uh, wind farm sites we had. And we need to explore different options and decks that we need to get across this. So it was a great way just once we had the existing models done, actually drop the different decks on it to show exactly what was required. Another example here is a pole set foundation. This is a very unique example for a pole set for overhead lines. This is where we're running through bogs. What we do is we steel sheet pile around it and we dig out all the peat and we put the pole sets in as shown. And this is a great way to show the contractors of how exactly we needed to fix the pole sets rather than going through 2D drawings. A 3D drawing explained to them straight away exactly what they needed to know. On the end there is just um, an example of a, of a dam, it's called Cliff Dam. But this was, these dams, the drawings for these were very, very old. So what we needed to do, we digitized some of the uh, existing drawings and we used AutoCAD to do that. And we got the AutoCAD profiles, pushed them into Revit and then literally extruded them just to build these models so we could use them in presentations and such like to explain parts of the dams. This here is another one we did on, in Revit. I know it should have probably been done in Inventor for those in the room who know Inventor, but it's something we did, in pro, uh, we did a prototype to show that the lads could work underneath a live equipment with a shield. Now this is done in many different packages. We use AutoCAD for this, we use SketchUp for the people, for the men involved there, and then pushed it to Revit, and from Revit we pushed into Showcase to give you that visualization. On the right hand side then is the Belcam 220 transformer. This here is the surge arresters, where the, where the clearance zones are, are there, the surge arresters underneath that. We needed to zone around that to know where our walls were being put in place. So it's very handy when you can build the actual equipment, take them in from the, the manufacturer, put it in, and then be able to build this infrastructure around it. So the clearance zones here showed exactly where we need to position our walls and such like, because this is a temporary situation. Here is an example of um, Carrington Power Station. Now, this, we didn't build this model straight away. This is it from an EPC contractor, um, Alstrom Power and Duel Fuego. It's a 820 million pound sterling job built for the ESB. It's done in Aviva altering software, on which we export into Navisworks. Um, the reason they, they use this very successfully is if you look at the pipe rack at the front here, they, took, they built that pipe rack in sections. So what they did on site was when they were, all the pipes were involved, uh, it, it, it built on site, or actually fabricated away from site, and what they did was then they brought them on site, scanned in the next piece they required, just to make sure they were millimeter accurate, and it worked for the whole, the whole job, and it was, worked out very well. We also used, when we came to site for this, we were the site engineers, and we came to site, we used it all for coordination of our pipe work, drainage and such like within this foundation. The next one I'll show you, that give you some of the idea of the detail involved in this job. This is a cut section through the turbine hull, showing, it shows the turbine hull foundations around, pile foundations around it. Now, this model, we were told by the contractor, took 
20 people, nine months to build. And um, the, the beauty of it is that as it was an EPC contractor, he could take all, get all the vendors on board very early. So he got all the equipment very early, so he could put it into his model, clash the tech, and use before he even got to site, which worked out very successful. Another example we have, this is Poolavuka pen stocks. We used this here, we used a um, point cloud survey and photogrammetry here. So we could, we could look at uh, point cloud the whole pen stocks, so we could find out where the, all the existing foundations were. We wanted to put the stairs up the center. And as you can imagine from existing traditional um, surveying techniques, this would be very, very difficult. So when we located all the actual uh, um, supports for the pen stocks, we, strung a landing, we could string a landing between the two of them, and then from there we could build the stairs all the way up. This here is a sample substation we did for training point of view. So 110, 220 hybrid GIS, which is gas insulated switch gear, AIS, which is air insulated switch gear, which is that's the air insulated switch gear, gas insulated switch gear is in here in the buildings. Now, this here um, was a coordination between our electrical department, our, our suppliers, and the civil department. We use many different uh, pieces of software in this. For example, we have the Revit model is this, and the site works is all the Revit model. And then what we, all the electrical equipment is done in Bentley, so the microstation. So how we did this was, rather than use uh, any of it, what we, there's an application called iModeler, which you can clip onto Revit. So you take the Revit models, you push them through this iModeler, and it can be picked up through into the Bentley substation, the, the Bentley pilot. Also, the transformers here, they were done in AutoCAD, I think AutoCAD uh, 3D at the time. And we can push all these through into, with using these eye modelers to, to get a file out. Then what we did was to produce something like these slides, we put them into showcase so we can show them. Now, this is actually the same site again. This is done in showcase again. This, is a, uh, this process took about eight hours to process this piece. You can see we use these for training point of view. We can point out to people what's, what's dangerous on sites, what's, what's involved on sites, before they ever even go to a site, so they understand exactly what's involved. This here gives you a very good overview of what the site, what's on the sites. As you can imagine, a we'll run through like this, or a typical run through this, could explain to anybody what's there and the dangers that would be involved. This here is an. Sorry. Sorry, I almost suppose that one doesn't actually work, but it doesn't really matter. It's just all it showed was some um, switch gear being placed on to, into the actual building itself. But I hope um, all these examples have shown you of many different authoring softwares that we use, and I hope this gives you a flavour of what we've achieved with digital modeling within ESBI. Thank you all very much for listening.